Ah, <sighs> guys, I gotta vent to you. This morning, woke up, you know, jumped out of bed, had my skip on, walked into my office, opened the shades to get some light in, and when I look outside, I was very, very disappointed. Winter has definitely returned. In fact, so that you can sympathize with me, I'm gonna walk outside and show you just how it is. Oh, it's cold, it's snowing, and I'm back inside. That's the extent of how far I got today. Turned around pretty quickly. P.S. How do you like my shoes and my socks? Wool socks with my Reynot. That's what they're called in Finnish. Reynot. All the grandpas wear these shoes. <laughs> okay guys, I'm totally not dressed for this weather. I'm actually in my shorts right now. So let's just get back inside. So, looks like it's just gonna be a cozy day in the studio. Enjoy my breakfast. Are you wondering what I'm eating? It's cereal with these uh, yogurt and strawberry bits. Totally mushy now because I already put the milk in a while ago when I was filming. Big, big mistake. Still so bummed about that snow. You guys don't even know. Oh, I guess before we start, I should get out of my pajamas. Just give me one more second. Yeah, that's better. Now we're in our regular clothes. Today, I wanna to talk about how to edit with my own Lightroom presets. Specifically, I wanna talk about how I achieve the look in my Instagram photos, because often I'm getting DMs asking, how do you get those warm tones, or how do you get those nice earthy green tones in your photos? And that's really the style of my Instagram feed. I really love warm tones, nice green earthy tones, and that's what I wanna show you, how to achieve that look with my Lightroom presets. First off, I wanna say though, no matter what someone tells you, there is no one-click fix. No matter how awesome a Lightroom preset is, you're always gonna have to do some minor tweaks to get it looking perfect. So that's why I wanna show you what minor tweaks I do when I'm using my Lightroom presets to get the look that I love on my Instagram feed. All right, so let's open up Lightroom and start editing. All right, when it comes to editing with my Lightroom presets, there's only a few adjustments I do every time, but it's never gonna be a one-click fix. You are gonna have to do some adjustments based on what kind of lighting you're shooting in, whether the skin tones work out or not, but it's really easy to do these tweaks. So first I just go with the preset base. And in this one, you know, usually what I do is first I do the exposure. So I figure out if it's too dark or too bright. And I actually kind of liked where it was already just because I'm crazy about these logical things. I'm gonna straighten the photo right away. And then from there I go to white balance. So usually I go maybe a thousand less or a thousand more and figure out what style I want. Okay, I think 5,000 was too little, 6,000 maybe a little too warm, so I'll go 5,500 and that was the happy medium. And then I usually go, you know, 10 less or 20. Um, I almost liked the minus 10. I personally tend to like a little bit more green tones and also just a warmth to the photo. Some people don't like that, but that's my style. So already here, you can see the exposure is good, the white balance is good. And then what I do always at the end is I always zoom to the skin tones and I click the hue. And then I just tweak a little bit depending on how I want it to be. You don't want it to be too yellow or green like that, but maybe this is a little bit too reddish. So I'm just gonna put a little bit over. And this is a great tool if you click this little tool right here and you click the skin, it's gonna automatically uh, choose on the right here which colors or skin tones is affecting. So for example, if you want to choose the orange, it's gonna do that. Or if you choose over here, it's gonna choose blue because of the blue shirt. So it's a really good tool. You can use this for all three for luminance. So for example, if the skin's not bright enough, you can just click it and just lift it up a little bit and it'll choose, for example, all the orange, red, and yellow related to that one. All right, pretty easy. This photo didn't have to do many tweaks, but this is the TH preset base, so this is kind of what I start with always up in the beginning. But some of these other ones already have some tweaks made to them. For example, the TH desaturated cinematic. So again, this preset is 
based on the preset base, but then it's made into more of a desaturated look if you want that kind of cinematic feel. So in the beginning, I had to always change the exposure because it's backlit, it's a little bit brighter, so I'm gonna do a little bit darker. Then I'm gonna try the white balance, so a thousand less, and then a thousand more. And that's like back, back and forth. I want this to be a little bit more on the colder side. Sometimes you might want to add more contrast if you want. It's a simple way just to tweak the presets a little bit. For example, this one, because it's backlit. Whenever you have backlight, it's less contrasty. So I'm going to add contrast. And at the end, I always go to the hue. Just check a little bit. I think it was good the way it was. I've really worked on these presets so you get good skin tones. So actually, you don't have to do too often different tweaks. All right, third photo, let's try the TH3 Lifted Shadows. Uh, this preset uh, lifted the shadows here just to get that kind of faded vintage look as you can see here in the, in the blacks. But obviously in this photo, if you look at the histogram, it's leading a little bit more towards the underexposed side. So we're gonna lift up the exposure, straighten the photo, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again, 5,000, 7,000. And then maybe go a little bit less and then tweak the uh, as well. This is at 10, so a little bit more uh, magenta and I maybe want it to be a little bit more green. That's good. There you go. Again, pretty easy to edit. Not hard, not a lot of adjustments. This photo, then I'm gonna use TH4. TH4 Pop um, has a little bit more contrast and the, the saturation is a little bit higher and also the tone curve is a little bit more contrasty as you can see. So it gives just a nice little pop, whereas for example, if you have the desaturated cinematic, it's a lot less more desaturated and kind of flatter. So we have the pop here. And again, just gonna go 500 less, maybe bring a little bit more green into it. Yep, and the skin tones, they're already nice. So we don't have to even do that. But as you can see, I really have the same rhythm for all my photos. Do the exposure, try adding a little bit of contrast. If the photo's blown out, recover some of the highlights. And then I do the white balance adjustments and then I go to the hue, saturation, luminance, depending if I need it. All right, this is a photo of me in Norway. We're gonna do the TH5 brown tones for this one. All right, in the beginning, obviously again, this one's leaning a little bit more towards the underexposed, so we're gonna bring it. And it's a little bit too yellow for my likings just because the white balance is too high. Maybe a little bit more. Perfect. So just look at that even before, after. A few adjustments, pretty easy though. And you get that nice cinematic warm green earth tones for your photos. All right, for this photo, we're gonna use TH7. This is a nice little variation right away in the beginning. It's like, oh, it might not be that good, but just watch a few little tweaks. So obviously this photo, it's way underexposed. So we're gonna lift up the exposure, bring down the white balance a little bit. And voila. already done before after before after really small tweaks um, here's a photo shoot I did with one company for a shoe company uh, I'm gonna use the black and white tones for this so got TH black and white you got TH black and white 2 and TH black and white 3 so the difference between this ones is this has got the um, the highlights dropped as you can see in the white areas there's not like true whites and then TH black and white 2 has the highlights dropped and it has the shadow lifted so it kind of gives us more vintage feel and then black and white 3 is just a very contrasty with either the highlights or the shadows lifted but um yeah with a lot of these presets especially the black and whites they are quite quick the adjustments so for example this one just maybe it would make it a little bit brighter a little bit darker depending on what the thing I'm gonna bring down the highlights just a little bit that's about it. I'm already liking it. it. Looks good. All 
Also, just to show you how it would work with a snow photo here, for example, let's use the preset base. Okay, so obviously we want it to look a lot more warm based on the style of editing that I like doing. So let's try 8000. I'm just gonna crop this a little bit. And then for example, in the winter here in Finland, we are never tanned, so my skin is quite white. So you can do just simple things like you can go to the lumens and just bring down the luminance of my skin. That's gonna already bring a little bit of kind of tan to it. And as well, I can go to the saturation and just bring up a little bit of saturation in that to make me look a little more healthy. And look at the before and after that. They're not crazy tweaks to the photos, but they definitely make the photo look a lot more just nice, warm, earthy tones. I think that's the, the thing with presets is that sometimes when people sell presets, they try to make like the craziest adjustments to the photo and they might look, and they might look good on the examples, but then when you try to use it for everyday use, they don't actually work very well. So that's why I want to make presets that actually work on a variety of photos and you just have to do small minor tweaks to get them to work. So as you can see on all the photos, it's really quite simple. Choose your preset, adjust the exposure, maybe add contrast depending if it's backlit or forward lit, change the white balance, and then if you need to do some HSL work, use the HSL sliders. But really easy, really small tweaks, and the photos look good in an instant. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use my Lightroom presets. If you didn't know, there's a 30% sale going on right now on all my Lightroom presets on my LUP pack and as well the Lightroom preset and LUP pack bundle. So if you want to grab both of those, 30% off, it's a great deal. I just want to thank all you guys for supporting me. When you guys buy the LUP packs and presets, it helps me continue to create great videos for this channel. So it's kind of a win-win. If you support me, I'm able to create better content for you guys. So thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and as well, smash the like button and also comment Comment below and be a part of the community. It's always great to hear your comments, hear your feedback, and I love to answer back to you guys as much as possible, so feel free to comment below. And don't get startled if you start seeing some Insta stories from us being in Africa, because yes, when I post this video, we will be in Africa. Pray for us that the lions don't eat us on the safari and uh, that we don't get malaria. Have a great week, guys.